Hey everybody, welcome. This video we are going to be learning about for loops. So we've talked about while loops and now we're basically going to take a while loop we already have and convert that to a for loop calling out some key important things. Overall, this video shouldn't be too bad once you understand while loops, so it shouldn't take too long to go through this material. Before we get into it, I wanted to give a special thank you to our sponsor, Visual Assist, which is an extension for Visual Studio to enhance the C++ development experience, as well as C and C Sharp. So great if you're going to be building games or using Visual Studio to follow along with this series. So thank you to them. So we have been working on this play game function, which is basically a guessing game where it checks if your guess count is less than guesses. So the guesses is passed in, showing how many you're allowed to guess. And I mentioned when we were talking about while loops, there's three important components, which is initialization and then some condition or comparison, whichever is easier to remember, condition. So that needs to evaluate to true for this loop to run. And then at the end of the loop, typically the last thing or close to the last thing, we will have this here, which is the update. And this is how we progress to the end of the loop. Now a while loop is very handy because I can move this guess count plus plus around. So in this situation, you can see we're incrementing it before we are outputting it. If we did the increment at the very end, it's going to change what that output is. So while loops give you a little bit more functionality and flexibility as to when we increment or update values. A for loop, although very similar, has a very consistent structure across all for loops. So let's talk about what that for loop is going to look like. What we will do is we will keep the while loop here and scoot it down and we'll say four. Now the structure, the, the syntax here is going to look very similar to start with, but it's going to change pretty quickly because we're going to actually put three different things inside of these parentheses. The first thing is the initialization. So what we can do is we can say int guess count and set that to zero. So notice this is the exact same line as this one here. So we will remove that. The next thing is we are going to put some condition. So after a semicolon, we will say guess count is less than guesses. Hmm, that looks very similar to this line right here. So let's just go ahead and remove this. And what we can do then is basically use the original body from the while loop for the for loop. The last thing that we're going to do is have the update, which is going to be guess count plus plus. Hmm, that looks very similar to what we have down here. So you can see it has all of the three same components, but we're just going to define those all at the same spot so we can easily see what is going on. You can know exactly how the loop works just by looking at this single line. You should now be able to run this as is However, it's not going to work exactly as you might expect. And I'll explain why, and it has to do with this output here. So if we get to the point where we play this game and it asks us to guess a number, let's say we guess five, it says you've guessed zero times. If you remember from the while loop, we incremented before we outputted that value. So now this doesn't happen until after. So the exact breakdown is this statement here happens only once at the beginning. Then before each iteration, so in order for the entire body to be executed, this must evaluate to true. This statement does not happen until after the body is executed. The functionality is all exactly the same. The difference is just the output. So what we can do is we can just modify this output to guess count plus one. Since it's being printed right before the guess count is incremented, we can just change the display. So let's run this, make sure I'm not totally crazy, and let me hop through the menus just to get the game playing. You get five guesses, we'll go with four, too low, let's try. 16, too high. We'll split that in the middle somewhere, let's say 10. Congrats, I won, awesome. So I was actually kind of expecting to run out of guesses. Let's just make sure that's functioning correctly, which it should be. Do you want to play a game? 
All right, so we have five guesses. I'm just going to say one, four, five times, and it stops. So you can see the loop works exactly the same way, but in my opinion, it's a much better structure. I like to have all of those pieces of a loop up front. One more variation that you can do is instead of starting at zero and then outputting guess count plus one, you could just start out at one and just change the comparison or the condition. For that, we will say guess count starts out at one. We will remove this and then say less than or equal to guesses. This should run the same way. So in this situation, we can guess three, four, five times, and you can see it still works. And the output looks right each time. So we will talk about some variations and just some important notes about how we set this up in the next video. My personal preference is to keep it starting at zero. So I'm going to go with zero and then guess count plus one. We'll talk about why in more detail in the next video and some of the upcoming episodes when we start talking about arrays. My general preference is when I have a certain number of times a thing is going to happen, I prefer a for loop. If I have something that's going to run indefinitely, I prefer a while loop. Although you can often use either loop for whatever usage, it just makes sense for me to use a for loop when I'm starting at some number and incrementing until we stop at some number where a while loop I'll usually use if it's something like while true and then breaking out of that loop later on at some point. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to create a for loop that counts down. You could use that in this example. So instead of counting how many times they've guessed, you could count how many guesses they have left. If you want a challenge, you can try to build that now and check out the next video for the solution. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.